video to where the wild things are. Maurice Sandek was an American children's author and illustrator. In fact, he's, he illustrated many more books than he actually wrote himself. His most well-known book is Where the Wild Things Are. And really, it's one of the most beloved American children's uh, books overall. There's a Hollywood uh, adaptation that's pretty interesting, but uh, is very also very different from the book. Much of the book's uh, value and strength is indeed in Sandang's illustrations and not just the story itself. And we can immediately see that they have much more to them than simply showing uh, what the text tells us. The first sentence of the story covers three pages and is quite minimalistic on details. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another. His mother called him wild thing and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That's the first sentence, three pages with several illustrations. We are not told what Mitchif Max has, is doing, but we do get to see the mischief in the pictures. Notice that the picture does not overlap with the text, as if letting the picture has it, have its own space, different from the story, the text, and that from page to page, the frame of the picture becomes bigger. So the pictures become bigger. As if we are getting closer to Max or Max's world is becoming bigger. Max is depicted as angry. The illustration helps us imagine how it, his mother sounded when she shouted out wild thing and remember that wild thing is the word the expression that his mother uses we can also see that he's hurt and angry we see his reaction to what she says and we have his emotion in a way that's not described in the text then the forest begins to grow. Only when it is fully grown and the room disappears completely does the image cover the whole page. You see now the image covers the whole page when he's in his uh, imaginary wild world. Notice how the trees go beyond, notice these trees, how they go beyond the frame, the exact frame of the picture emphasizing their wildness. They don't follow the frame of the picture. These images also emphasize something that you might miss if you're just reading the text. And that's the fact that the forest is growing within his room. So this is not just a story about going away to a place where the wild things are, but also about how the wildness is part of the home and part of Max. And this is of course illustrated by his behavior and the very important wolf suit that is described uh, both in the text and illustrated in the images. The wolf suit that symbolizes uh, Max being wild. We also see Max's reactions to the change in his room, something that the text does not describe. He's happy and excited. We see this especially here and here. He's dancing. Seems to make him even wilder. The fact that the room is getting wilder makes him wilder. Or perhaps it's the other way around. His reaction to his mother makes him at first more wild and that's what turns the room into a wilderness, a forest. 
You also notice that his eyes are closed. Whenever we can see his eyes here, they are closed. And here they seem at least closed. And in the next picture, we don't see his eyes at all, suggesting that possibly this is something that he sees when he closes his eyes as if it's part of his imagination. Not really happening in the story, but imagined by Max. Then, then it travels to where the wild things are. In one of the images, there's a sea dragon, just to notice that it's not described at all in the text. This is not mentioned in the text at all. Sometimes you notice that the illustrations add some elements to the story that does not exist in the text. Here it's a dragon, it's not really crucial, but sometimes these are very crucial elements as we saw in other examples. Then uh, Max reaches the land of the wild things. We only know how they look. Uh, we only know what they look like thanks to the illustration that the story does not describe them. Ask yourselves how um, you react to what they look like, or maybe imagine how a five, six year old might react to them. They are, uh, you can see, combinations of different animals, lions, goats, birds. They have a lot of uh, sharp teeth, claws, horns. They are very spiky. But they are definitely grotesque and monstrous, maybe scary. But at the same time, and this is a little reminiscent of uh, the tiger that uh, we I discussed in the earlier video. At the same time, they are a fairy. And some of them have uh, round heads like babies. They can be viewed as cute even. I think a lot of people think they are cute. Their mouths are in a curving shape, suggesting a smile or maybe at least a potential for a smile. They are both scary and attractive at the same time, like the wildness itself within Max. It might, we might argue that it scares him, but he is also attracted to this point of view, or is also attracted to this way of behaving. Max is the king of the wild things, declares a rumpus that is making a lot of mess and a lot of noise. He declares that they should start playing around violently, something that is not very common happens in the book. The narration stops. You see, there is no space for a narrative at all. There is a double page spread for these images. So the narration stops and all we have is the illustrations. These scenes should be noisy, right? They're having a rumpus. The, it looks like they're singing and, and, and screaming, but there's actual silence of the text. When I read this to when I read this to my kids, sometimes I would make like funny monkey voices as we were looking at these images, but sometimes I would just be silent and let them look at them. I never decided what's the correct way to read this. I think for a moment, why would the narration stop at this moment? First, obviously, to give these fantastic illustrations the right to speak for themselves, which they do. These are just fantastic works of art. But also, I think that because this is the height of Max's wildness, he's almost fully an animal here. He's totally connected to being a wild thing. He's the king of the wild things. And like an animal, Max here does not have 
any use for language. So there is no language to describe what is happening. It's giving up on language and only uh, being interested in action and mischief and the rumpus. There is no words to describe the rumpus. But the wildness cannot be sustained forever. You can't stay wild forever when you're a human being. Perhaps he's learned that wildness needs to be contained and controlled. He sends the wild things to bed without supper, just like his mother did, drawing nearer to her point of view of the world, of her point of view on how he should behave. And at that moment, his longing for home is becoming stronger and stronger, and he thinks he smells something good to eat. Uh, good hot food is always a symbol for home. This we learn not from the illustration, but from the narrative. He leaves the wild things and they are unhappy. They want to eat him up exactly what uh, he told her, his mother when they were having their fight. They want to contain him within themselves and never let him go. But we see in the illustration that he is happy to live, that he wants to go back home. At least for now, he can move away from his wildness from the wild things, from being a wild thing, and return home to her mother and the rules. When he returns to his room, it is no longer a forest. We have a kind of uh, this uh, potted plant to remind us of the forest that it uh, was earlier, but it's no longer a forest. Even we, before we read it in the narrative, we see that there's food on the table. It is not, the room is not wild anymore, just like Max isn't wild anymore, and he's able to take off, or to begin at least to take off the wolf so that symbolizes his wildness. You see, we see for the first time, I think, his uh, regular hair and not just the wolf suit. Again, there's food on the table, showing us that the mother never stopped caring about him, even though he felt like he was gone for many, many years. She never stopped caring about him. She keeps caring about him, even when he fights her, and it's very reassuring. The final page says that the food was still hot emphasizing perhaps the warmth of his mother's love and care. We may say that his wildness was contained all along by the mother, despite the crisis and the fight. It is fascinating to me that the final line, symbolizing home and love, has no illustration, perhaps suggesting that this is something each reader, each young reader will visualize uh, themselves, or that there's no need to visualize it because we all know what it feels like. It also emphasizes which one character has never been illustrated in this book, even though she's mentioned in the narration. The mother, I let you think for yourselves why the mother was never illustrated, why Sandek decided never to illustrate the mother. This was an example of a close reading of a picture book that involves both the text and the illustrations. There's actually a lot more that you could say um, about either or both the text and the images. However, I did want to keep the 
video at a reasonable length. You could definitely approach it from other directions. In the next video, I'll give a more schematic view about ways images and text can be related one to another, how we approach it as readers and interpreters.